Hi everyone and thanks for watching. So this is already the seventh video. So we've went through a lot of processes making molds and so on. And this video will all be about making a silicon vacuum bag. So this is the result you will get at the end of the video. So I want to say I'm not perfectly happy about it. But there is a lot of space for improvement. I got some remarks on Facebook and so on. And I'll keep an eye on that just to improve the next vacuum bag I'll make. So the first step will be making some parts that fit into the mold. So this will add the thickness that you will have while laminating it under the vacuum bag. So that extra thickness will add, um, will simulate the fibers and resin added under the vacuum bag while using it. So here's a step I've just wanted to include because I didn't included it well in previous videos this is about getting your vacuum bag into all the places tightly against the mold this step is the most important step while working with pre brick or vacuum bagging or whatsoever what else so um, how do you do it you just add a bit of vacuum gently uh, put the vacuum bag into all the tight corners and so on make sure there's no bridging so bridging means the bag is not fully in contact against the mold and the laminate on the inside of the bag so you can do this in multiple times and once you're sure about it you can just draw a full vacuum and the part is ready to be cured so once uh, the parts were in the oven so this is pre break carbon fiber once again so the parts were into the oven cured at around 100 degrees celsius and now i'm just removing the vacuum the release film that is on top so make sure you keep your parts into the mold uh, as curious as you are you may not remove them just to be sure that they are fully against the mold and no silicon will drip on the uh, edges down into the mold under the parts So here's the next step, so this is, uh, I don't know how you call it, it's wax or uh, modeling clay or it's just something to make some shapes and so on, just to add some uh, texture and some extra shapes just to put that vacuum port on to the molds. So that level is used to add some um, breeder fabric under the vacuum bag so everything will be clear when you follow this video so next step will be leveling the molds it's very important because resin uh, silicon I mean will want to go to the deepest point into your mold so that's very important so here I'm mixing the silicone um, so as you will see the silicone right here is very thick it's like a very thick syrup or something and uh, once again I'll refer to chocolate or um, it's even more than honey um, it's very sticky so just mixing it well it's very difficult to mix because it's so so thick and so on but um, you can manage just to mix it well so here's the next step I'm pouring everything into a bigger cup this because I will degauss and remove all the air bubbles that are inside of the silicon so I'm putting it into the vacuum chamber putting it on and this is what will happen so it will rise uh, multiple times I think it's um, you just do it multiply by 20 in height and then it will just collapse so at the end I'm left with uh, air free resin uh, silicon that I just pour around the edge just to fill the entire edge all around the mold so as you can see it's going very slowly so um, I'm just taking my time for it making sure that everything is leveled uh, on the sides of the mold and into the mold as well So here I'm trying multiple techniques because for me as well this was the first time I was trying to make a silicon bag and just want to share my experience so I did it with this 
just a little stick just to try to go into the tight edges and so on but it didn't work that well so I went with a bigger uh, squeegee I call it just to have a nice and flat or I would say flat dirt finish uh, into the mold and all around the mold so I took a lot of time for that just to make sure that everything was covered with silicon I knew I will have to add multiple co multiple coats um, but just wanted to get it as perfect as possible from the first layer so here you can see I'm um, removing all the excess resin that is onto the flange uh, just to have that gutter completely filled with a tiny film on top of that because I knew I would add more uh, silicon after that so this is a result after the first layer so everything is covered there are some uh, minor um, places that aren't covered with uh, tiny little air bubbles but that's why we'll add a second coat so here I'm adding the second coat then I did a stupid mistake I used some breeder fabric just to reinforce the mold so uh, breeder fabric isn't uh, the best fabric for that because it will soak up a lot of silicon um, without adding a lot of strength so that's uh, a point of improvement I will do in my next molds so here it's a big disaster so I, I was like um, very unhappy with that uh, so I've just uh, removed the entire flange because it sheared from uh, the center part because the edges were too sharp so there is a 90 degree angle in between the inside part and the parts uh, the part flange so luckily uh, the positioning was okay because there was a gutter and the inside as well with the connector so everything was well in place and I was able to repair it so um, it's all about not giving up and with the experience I had by using silicon in some other projects I knew that silicon would stick to silicon so if you're not using a release agent silicon will stick to silicon um, but if you add epoxy on silicon for example it will be self-releasing so that's why I'm making a vacuum bag in the first place so here I'm removing the entire vacuum bag this time so um, I was very successful with this one so it's still the same bag but now I'm successful and got a full vacuum bag This is the result I'm having at the end of the day. So um, this is some techy day just because this is not working yet. I have to do some research about it. Yeah, I'll show you how it works right now. So I'll put on the pump right now and show you how it works. some problems right there and that's just a perfect vacuum so the bag is working just having some small problems but everything should turn out okay that's the fun of everything about having problems and solving them okay so this was just a little proof of concept to myself just to tell myself that the vacuum bag had no leaks and everything could work so I've started making some quick parts so this is a hybrid carbon Kevlar fabric um, just wet layup with some uh, epoxy resin it's a very easy way of making quick parts so this was more about testing and making parts later on I will be using this technique with the silicon vacuum bag for making pre-break parts and more complex parts and so on 
So here I'm just wetting the fabric, putting it into the molds. Um, it's very easy and quick to do. So here is the setup with the silicon vacuum bag. So under the vacuum connector there is some uh, breather fabric just to absorb all the excess resin coming out of the part. So I've used a lot of resin making it very resin rich. I didn't use uh, a flow mesh, resin flow mesh. Um, I could do that as well but um, I just wanted to make quick parts and just see how the finish could be off the part. So here's a quick uh, glimpse of how it looks like into the oven. So once again with the vacuum on the outside. This is the demolding. So as you can see I've used some tacky tape just because the flange wasn't working perfectly at the moment. I'm still working on that um, but it surely can easily be fixed. It worked uh, very good with the tacky tape as well. So here I'm removing the parts, mostly you can just pull it out by using the peel ply to remove it as well. So um, this is the result you will get out of the mold. So just that little bit of sticking onto the mold. But here it is removed from the mold. So I had some little pinholes, uh, probably caused by the vacuum bag not being sealed completely of so or sometimes having air leaking through. But those are some minor issues that can be worked on. So very happy about results, very easy to work with. And as you can see in the previous tutorial, I've showed you how you can finish your parts. So this is how I finished the parts from this tutorial in the previous tutorial. Thanks for watching, this was the last part of the 7 videos that were uploaded but more videos are coming soon so have a look at my Facebook page just to find some updates and see what the next projects will be. More than 500 people already like my Facebook page so have a look maybe you might like it as well. If you like this video give my video a thumbs up, comment and share with your friends they might like it as well maybe. So subscribe for more and see you next time.